What is up, Beefcakes? I just saw the boy in the Heron, and I got some stuff to say. So basically, the boy in the Heron is about a teenager who basically has his mom die in World War II, and um, he, his dad, and his stepmom move into this place, this kind of house in the forest, where, um, you know, they kind of start over a new life because of his dad's job. He's grieving, he's very angsty, doesn't talk much. And he finds this heron, this very strange gray heron. And uh, magic ensues. Now, unfortunately, while I won't spoil anything, I couldn't really get behind the film. While it's really beautiful, the music is great, the animation is great, the voice acting, mwah, it was ultimately the pacing that did it for me. The pacing was so... Not necessarily just slow, but it was kind of aimless. Not to get into too much detail if you haven't seen it, but basically, um, for a while, the sort of objective of the movie is to find somebody, and later on, that ends up becoming, they end up having a new goal where they have to find somebody else before they find that other person, just separately. So then all of a sudden, the movie is about finding someone, and then finding someone after that, and then, you know, it, it, sort of the point was kind of confusing about what was going on here. Now, I know what you're thinking, skill issue, I know. But the movie was two hours long, which is, I believe, Miyazaki's... I don't know if it was Miyazaki's longest movie, but it's pretty long for, I guess, an animated film. But you know what, um, just because it's an animated film doesn't mean it can't be two hours. I did, after all, sit through Across the Spider-Verse, which was two hours and 20 minutes, which I thought was honestly kind of under... not as satisfying as it could be because of the ending, but that's a separate video. A video I already made. But yeah, my sort of feeling of being underwhelmed by this movie made me look back on other Miyazaki movies that are pretty well received, specifically Spirited Away and Howl's Moving Castle. They're good, especially Spirited Away. I think Spirited Away is, um, the animation is really magical, it's really beautiful. I love the patience, the patience of the film, but the writing seems to be such a drag in every Miyazaki movie I watch. Now some are worse than others. My favorite ones, like My Neighbor Totoro or Princess Mononoke, I don't really have these problems with pacing. I would say even Princess Mononoke drags at times. As I was watching The Boy and the Heron, I was constantly mesmerized by the beauty and the soundscape and all of these wonderful technical elements. But I had to sit through sort of a protagonist with a goal, but was somewhat aimless. And this could be found exactly in Spirited Away. Spirited Away, while pretty amazing world being created. And in some ways, you can see the kind of plot similarities when we look at the beginning of the movies where um, you have a kid finding this new place after, you know, be, the family being relocated due to work and, you know, political kind of economic circumstances. And the kid has to kind of find a world of their own, maybe to cope with what's happening in the world, or maybe it's because of the world around them that their magical world is the way it is. That being said, the movie drags, the movie feels like it's making it up as it goes. There's something improvisational and spontaneous about the movie, which, look, spontaneousness can be great. However, when you're making things up as you're making the movie, the payoffs aren't always so great. And I felt that way about The Boy and Aaron. I didn't feel that the payoff was always so great, and I felt that way about Spirited Away too. My issue with Howl's Moving Castle has a lot more to do with the style of it, because we associate Miyazaki with this kind of uh, whimsical, fantastical world that we all love, and I, and I love it too, don't get me wrong. But the issue with that movie is that it tries a little too hard. It has a little too much pick-me energy. Another popular Miyazaki movie that I have a little bit of beef with is probably... Kiki's Delivery Service. Kiki's Delivery Service has issues that I would associate with The Boy and the Heron, where it feels a bit aimless, and we follow this character who's trying to navigate this world, and 
you know, the thing about navigating the world is that it's not always so action-packed. Sometimes there are a lot of questions. Sometimes there's a feeling of aimlessness. And uh, you got to be patient. You got to be patient with these sorts of movies. I understand that. But again, the payoff, not quite there. Trust me, folks. When I watch Satan Tango, I am not anticipating some sort of uh, action finale where someone jumps off of a helicopter and shoots the terrorists. I'm not saying that. But because of the fantastical nature of these Miyazaki movies, I'm expecting something kind of great. And they tend to present themselves in that way. Now, something I liked about The Boy and the Heron is that it is a lot more humanistic. Even though we don't know a lot about the boy in the movie, it's a lot less about crowd-pleasing. The same way Howl's Moving Castle was, which is why I didn't like the movie. It tries, a, it, it, doesn't, it tries too hard to showboat rather than actually emotionally engage with the audience. But the way I feel about The Boy and the Heron is that it does a good job remaining introspective, remaining in the perspective of our protagonist, rather than playing tricks or looking for a round of applause every now and then for a set piece. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I think Miyazaki makes movies where um, it's, it's just some of the best animation you'll ever see, especially Princess Mononoke. By the way, if you haven't seen any Miyazaki movies, do not start with Princess Mononoke. It's kind of like, it's like starting Scorsese with The Wolf of Wall Street. It's just not the right way to do it. I recommend My Neighbor Totoro or maybe Kiki's Delivery Service. I think that's a good idea of what you're getting into. Ponyo, I would even say, is a good way to start. I love the world building. I love the feeling. I love the tone. I even, at times, I do love the patience and the relaxing nature of these movies from Studio Ghibli and Miyazaki. But I just wish that they wrote these damn scripts better. I wish that they weren't so improvisational. And this is true because Miyazaki has even said that he often makes things up as he goes along. I'm not just pulling this out of my butt. But what did you think about The Boy in the Heron? Did you think it was good? Did you think it was uh, overrated, underrated masterpiece, his best, his worst? Do you think it's going to be his last or do you think uh, he's going to make another banger? Uh, what do you think? I would love to see your thoughts in the comments below. Peace.